I moved to London eight years ago, and if you asked me eight years ago where I would be now, I would have never imagined that I would be a British citizen talking to you about how to become a British citizen. For those of you that don't know who I am, hello, hi, how's it going? My name is Anika and I'm an American citizen and now a British citizen and I wanted to share my personal journey with you. Now, if you are looking for steps on how to get the right visa or steps on how to get a British passport or even steps on how to pass your life in the UK test, I have done a number of videos all about those topics that I will link up in the cards for you right now or down in the description of this video. But today's video is a little bit personal to show you exactly what I did in order to become a British citizen. Now this is more of a story and a personal example of how I as an American moved to the UK and eventually became a British citizen. This video is not meant to give you exact legal or immigration advice so if you are looking for that please make sure you seek professional help. I am just here to share my story with you. I still look back on when I packed all my personal belongings and decided to make the move from Germany to London. It feels like yesterday I was trying to find a flat to live in and starting my first day at one of my last companies. Many things has happened since then and I have a lot of great memories and also a lot of tough times. I am especially grateful for finding a home in a new country in a way I feel like I belong here. I'm not sure if it's the diversity of the city or how natural it feels to be living in London, but I really started to feel like England was home over the last few years. I still look back at my own story and how I decided eight years ago to pack my bags and move from Germany to London. And I still remember the first day at my first job in London and that feels like a lifetime ago but it was such a great memory. Many things has happened to me since then, many positive things, many tough times, many good times and many not so good times but overall I have found a new home here in the UK. I'm so especially grateful for finding a new home in a new country. It is not easy to move to a new place where you don't know anyone and you're really trying to figure out your life. I'm not sure if it's the diversity of the city or the hustle and bustle or the fact that there are so many people that look like like me in London, it just really feels like home to me. And I'm super grateful that over the last few years, I have been able to call England and London my home. It's super a strange feeling that I really can't describe to any other expat that's possibly looking to move abroad, but I feel at home here in the UK and in London, but I also feel at home whenever I go back to the US. I have basically started to share my identity with two different places and hence why I now have British citizenship as well as American citizenship. And what's so crazy is you cannot pick one place or another to truly call home because both end up being your home. You end up being part of the culture, part of the people, part of the vibe, part of the whole way of doing life in the UK as well as whenever I go back to the US, I feel like I belong there too. So after realizing I started to call England home, I quickly realized that I needed to actually apply for British citizenship. Before we dive into the details of my citizenship journey, let me give you a little bit of a background story. I have been living abroad for now 13 years. It is crazy to say that. I have been away from home since 2011 and I just cannot believe that so much time has passed. And now we're in 2024 and I have spent almost the last nine years here in the UK and before living in the UK, I lived in Germany for four years as well. When I moved to the UK, at first I wasn't totally sure, but I really loved living and working here and I really enjoyed my friends and the people that I started to meet here. And after a few years, I quickly realized that I could actually see my life for the foreseeable future in the UK and that's what let me down the citizenship route. Now getting a British passport as an American requires a number of steps and you can go a number of different routes when it comes to becoming a British citizen as an American. And I've done a totally different video about all the visas that you can decide to go down and the routes you can decide to take when becoming a British citizen. But I won't discuss that today. I'm going to discuss my personal story. So if you wanna watch exactly which visa or which route you wanna take, click on the link up above or down in the description of this video and I will link the video to talk about all the visas. Now, the first step to British citizenship is eligibility and deciding if you can actually apply for British citizenship. So me personally, I actually had to be in the UK for five years, working and living here and paying taxes here for five years before I could go down this route. So the first step of my journey was getting a tier two visa, which is now considered a skilled person visa. 
Now this visa meant that I was able to work here in the UK for a specific company. I got two different tier two visas because I worked for two different companies while in the UK. So I spent about two and a half years at one company and nearly three years at another. And that meant that after having all that time working for those particular companies, I was in the UK for five years. You need to be in the UK for a minimum of five years, which I was. And then once you are here for five years, you can apply for the indefinite leave to remain. For my Americans, an ILR or indefinite leave to remain is basically like a green card. And an indefinite leave to remain is very much enough for you to live and work and continue to stay in the UK if you'd like. With an ILR, you can basically work for any company, do whatever you want and work in any industry or any profession that you'd like to. You can even claim public funds and decide to do whatever you want because it is essentially a green card. And if you decide to go into an ILR, you can continue to live and stay here for as long as you like because that basically grants you permanent residency in the UK. But I wanted to get a British citizenship or passport as well. And because of that, after having an ILR for 12 months, I was then able to apply for British citizenship. So the prerequisite to apply for a British citizenship is five years on a visa, which I was on the skilled worker visa, and then one year on an indefinite leave to remain visa or basically permanent residency. And then once you have a total of six years in both of those different requirements, you then can go down the passport or citizenship route. Now, I'm only sharing my personal advice. If you want official government information on this, the gov.uk website is a great place for you to go find all of that. So I would recommend checking out their website down in the description of this video. So in order to get your ILR, you also need to take the life in the UK test. And this is essentially a citizenship test. I have done a totally different video on how I studied and prepared for this test. If you wanna check out that video, I will link it in the cards or down in the description. But in order to get your indefinite leave to remain, you need to do your life in the UK test. And once you do that life in the UK test, it's valid. That means that you don't need to do it again in order to apply for citizenship. So you can just do it once, get your ILR, and then use that test result again to apply for citizenship. So basically, once you've proven out those first two steps, so first you've met the requirement of five years of living here on a visa, second, you've gotten the indefinite leave to remain or the settlement status, which is basically saying that you are a permanent resident here, you then pass your life in the UK test, now you can then go into applying for your citizenship. Now, all of this is costly, by the way, and it all adds up. And I'm not going to share exactly how much I paid for every little bit, because I know over the years, the pricing has changed and you can visit the Home Office website in order to find exact pricing. But for me personally, I had to pay for each one of my visas about 1500 pounds. And then you had to pay the NHS surcharge over time. So again, per year that I was here on a visa, I had to pay an NHS surcharge of around, I think it was like 500 to 600 pounds per year. And then I had to do that twice because I had two different visas. And then I applied for an indefinite leave to remain, which is again, another fee, which is about 1700 pounds that you're paying for indefinite leave to remain or permanent residency. Once you've done all of that, and once you've taken your life in the UK test, you basically have to gather all these documents to prove that you have been living in the UK for a minimum of six years and that you have passed the citizenship test or the life in the UK test. And the last thing you have to prove is that you have made the UK your primary residence. So basically you have to show the UK that over the last five to six years, you have not spent more than 450 days abroad. I actually personally had a spreadsheet where every single time I decided to go on a holiday or a work trip where I was outside of the UK, I listed it on this spreadsheet because it needs to show that actually throughout the year, the UK is my number one residency location. And the UK government wants to know this because if you're gonna become a citizen, they wanna know that you're actually living and staying here. So once you actually apply for citizenship, this can take anywhere from two to six months. I had to go through this in a post pandemic slash pandemic world. So for me, it took a little bit longer. I think citizenship lines or queues in order to get your actual citizenship is a lot faster today in 2024, but you basically apply with all these documents saying, hey, I've passed my life in the UK test. I've been here for 
six years, I have my indefinite leave to remain and I've not traveled for more than 450 days over the last five to six years. So once you have done all of those and proved all of that, and once you've actually applied, it's another fee again that you have to pay in order to become a citizen. And once you actually get a past or acceptance that you are now considered a British citizen, you actually have to attend a citizenship ceremony. Now, this ceremony is mandatory. You do have to attend it in order to actually become British and become a British citizen, because once you submit the forms and once you actually go through the process of saying, hey, I want to become a citizen, you get a basic paper or a acknowledgement that, hey, you are a conditional citizen, you need to attend your citizenship ceremony. And then once you attend the ceremony, then you're actually granted a piece of paper saying you are now a British citizen. At the ceremony, it's actually really cute and really sweet. I had to pledge my allegiance to the queen. I had to say the national anthem. And then someone from my local council gave me a piece of paper stating that I am now a British citizen, which was really sweet. Again, this was during the pandemic, so I could only bring one person along with me. Now it's a really nice ceremony that you can bring your family along with you. And then once you have this piece of paper saying that you are now a British citizen, you can decide to apply for a passport. This piece of paper basically already grants you British citizenship, so you don't need the passport. But if you do want to get a passport, you then go a step further and apply for a passport online. And then that passport is mailed to your home address. And there you have it. That is basically my British citizenship story, my personal story of how I did it. I worked for two different companies. I got two different types of visas. I then got my indefinite leave to remain. And then eventually I became a British citizen. I think it was a very long and not the easiest road, but looking back at it, I am so glad that I decided to go down this route because now I not only have one passport, but I do have two passports, which means that I can essentially travel and live between America and the US and travel to a number of countries around the world without visas because I have two of the strongest passports in the world. So for me personally, this was a great decision and I'm so happy I decided to go down this route. If you are personally deciding to go down this route, I'm happy to help you in any way I can. Please leave a comment down in the comments of this video and I'm happy to answer as much as I can. Remember, I can only share my personal advice. I am not a immigration specialist or lawyer, so I don't know exactly what's gonna happen for you. But what I can say is I am so excited that I am now British and American and I truly enjoyed this journey, even though it was a tough one and it wasn't always perfect and easy. I am now both British and American and that's super exciting for me. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy my story and how and why I decided to become British and American, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up so I know to create more content for you guys in the future just like this. And if you guys wanna see any of the other videos I have about being an American abroad or my citizenship journey or my life in the UK test, I have a whole playlist dedicated to all of my experiences as an American abroad and I will link it down in the description of this video. And if you do wanna see more videos like this in the future, please make sure to hit that big red subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you know exactly when my next video is going live. I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in the world and I hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.